I never thought that Samsung system animations were ugly until I saw them at 120 hertz at full speed. Most of you know that I've never been a high refresh rate fanboy. For the most part, I've always felt like high refresh rates on devices in the past have just shown me the stutters and jitters that I see in the animations and in the device performance. So recently I decided to do a little experiment with the three phones that I currently use on a daily basis to see what the difference between 60 hertz, 90 hertz, and 120 hertz was like for daily use. Now, this experiment was really simple. I decided to use my Pixel 6a at 60 hertz, my Pixel 6 at 90 hertz, and my S21 Plus at 120 hertz. Now, this is purely about how the devices feel to use, and it's really difficult for me to illustrate what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna do my best to share it with you. Now, I wanna preface this with saying that in the past, as soon as I got a new phone, I would directly go into developer settings, speed up all system animations and all just animations in general to 0.5x, which simply means that the animations have a shorter duration of time. I did this in the past because prior phones felt much slower and much less responsive with their long and bloated animations mostly Xiaomi phones, which I used in the past, as you guys know. Now, when I started this test, I started with all of these devices at the animation speed of 0.5X for the first four to five days. To be completely honest with you, for the first four to five days of this test that I was using all three of these devices side by side with their system animations at 0.5X, I didn't really notice much of a difference which kind of confirms what I've always felt like, which is that if animations aren't a priority to you, having your animations sped up really does make your device feel like it's operating faster. Now, sure, you still see the difference when scrolling through your feed. There's nothing that we can do about it. But how often are you going through your feed at maximum speed? I'm trying to read what I see on Twitter. I'm trying to see the pictures on Instagram. Usually when we, a collective group of smartphone users, are using our device, we're not trying to scroll up and down as quickly as possible. And because of this, I haven't really noticed much of a difference in how the device feels when scrolling through any apps, because more often than not, I don't care about how things on the screen look if I'm scrolling past them as quickly as I can. Now, after using all of these devices for a few days and realizing I didn't feel like there was that much of a difference, I remembered I hadn't changed my animation settings back. So I went back into the developer settings and changed all of them back to what they were from the factory. This? is when I felt a massive difference between 60 hertz, 90 hertz, and 120 hertz in day-to-day -day life. Now, I don't wanna overstate the impact that these differences had when using apps, because when I'm using apps, I'm not trying to move through them as quickly as possible. And I'm really quite confused at how some YouTube re reviewers claim that the high refresh rate makes things feel faster 100% of the time, because if anything, high refresh rate to me shows me the applications that have been poorly optimized, either with a bad splash screen, poor app animations in general, or because the app itself turns off or disables the high refresh rate. Now the biggest impact that I could see with the high refresh rate on these devices is that multitasking in between apps was a lot smoother feeling system animations were a little bit clearer and crisper and more visible. UI elements seem to kind of pop out a little bit more. But when I'm actually using apps like Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, which are all places that you guys should follow me, I didn't really see how me scrolling through them with a high refresh rate was improved from one device to another device. What I mean is that Instagram on my S21 Plus at 120 hertz didn't feel like I was getting a tangibly better experience than when I was using it at 60 hertz. And to me, it didn't feel like it was that big of a deal, at least at the app level. Now, 
This is all compounded and made worse by the fact that on Android, not all apps are optimized equally. Not all apps have the same in-app animations, nor do all of these apps actually operate at their maximum refresh rate when you're using them. This idea of your device just always feeling faster couldn't be further from the truth. A great example of this is going in between Telegram and YouTube Studio. Now, YouTube Studio has to load all of its data from YouTube servers, which I'm assuming are based in America for the creator stuff because I have an American account. But needless to say, when I open YouTube Creator Studio, I am met with a splash screen and the logo. And all this happens a lot clearer because the screen refreshes faster, but the app hasn't fully opened yet. So I'm left with this beautiful, smooth feeling animation of opening the app just to be met with a long app splash screen loading time. If I'm comparing that to Telegram, which is significantly more optimized and Telegram actually feels like it's running at 120 Hertz, going between Telegram and YouTube Creator Studio on my S21 Plus at 120 Hertz feels more jarring and it feels more stuttery and it feels less smooth. Now, if you're enjoying these kinds of videos, a like to the channel would be massively appreciated. And if you love the content here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So what did I learn after more than a week using the three different refresh rates side by side every day? And will this change about how I feel about devices moving forward and device screen refresh rates moving forward? Now, I know it seems pretty obvious what my outcome and what my takeaway from this is going to be, but I've actually kind of flipped on this. So I want you guys to go ahead, pause the video, comment about what you think my takeaways were, and let's get back into this. Okay, are you ready? This is what I learned after using all three refresh rates side by side for a week. Now, currently on Android, LTPO or variable refresh rate displays are reserved for top tier devices only which means that if you're on a device with a non-LTPO display, you're just burning through extra battery just to have an experience in some apps that sometimes feels smoother. Meanwhile, your system animations and all of your system menus and things within the system of your device will all have this very continuous, clean, and clear aesthetic and feel. But this is constantly interrupted by apps that are either not optimized or apps that need to pull data from the background before they can be loaded. Now, I would even say to you that depending on the apps that you use, the high refresh rate displays can make those apps feel worse because you have this very crisp and clean animations to open up to this app that's then hitting you with a long splash load screen. So what does this mean for consumers that want a device that feels fast and smooth and don't want to sacrifice battery life and want like just the best overall usage experience with high refresh rate and like system continuity and just this feeling of smoothness. Go buy an iPhone. But in all seriousness, I think that there's a Goldilocks zone for refresh rates and that's 90 Hertz. But we don't have a 90 Hertz LTPO panel on the market. So for consumers, you either have to be willing to get a premium Android flagship device with an LTPO display, or you have to be willing to buy a device with a 90 Hertz lock display or a device with a 120 Hertz lock display and just be willing to sacrifice battery life for a device that sometimes feels smoother and sometimes feels more fluid. You also have to be willing to just let it suck your system resources and suck more of your battery life because if your device is not using an LTPO display, you are just using more of your battery, more of your system resources to power that sometimes more fluid feeling experience, which is not something that I necessarily like can co-sign. It's not necessarily something that I can say that I want. I still think that 90 Hertz and well-optimized system animations are kind of the best compromise across everything right now. If you're not going to get a non-premium 120 Hertz LTPO Android equipped device, but 
if your device doesn't have well-optimized system animations or you have ugly system animations, which I kind of feel like my Samsung device has ugly system animations now, you're gonna see it. And after using my S21 Plus at 120 Hertz with the Samsung animations compared to my Pixel at 90 Hertz with the Google Pixel animations, my Pixel constantly feels smoother at 90 Hertz, even though it's got a slower screen than my S21 Plus. And it kind of confirms what I felt before when using my Redmi, uh, my Redmi Note 10 Pro when using my Xiaomi Mi 10, that these high refresh rate displays really only show you how well optimized the system is and the system animations are. And if you don't like the way those animations look, you are gonna be stuck with very clear, very crisp, ugly system animations. Thanks for watching my TED Talk, peace.